Welcome back to the Underground. Sorry that we've been absent from these normal podcasts for a while, but we've been quite busy out in the cold and the wet, getting ready for some future projects and just training in general. Right now, though it may seem like current events have gotten kind of quiet, things most certainly have not slowed down. So we have found it more important for we Intel weenies to get out from behind the desk and do some field work and work on some tradecraft. And on one particular day, sitting in a tent with freezing rain making everyone miserable, we got to talking about our favorite snivel gear. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So first off, what is snivel gear? Well, the definition is pretty simple. Any gear that is meant to keep you a little bit more warm, dry, and comfortable. The term originated within the military as a way to describe gear or items that are intended to stop a person from sniveling or whining during inclement weather. And of course, this means that within the military at least, this can be positive or derogatory depending on the context or the mission. For instance, try wearing a fleece cap in front of any army sergeant major when the temperature is 41 degrees Fahrenheit. But for we civilians who are not so much concerned about things like that, we can afford the luxury of snivel gear. And actually, some of this stuff isn't so much a luxury as it is a requirement to increase mission success. So first up, let's start with clothing. And by clothing, we mean thermal underwear and sleeping bags. Thermal undergarments are a great way to drastically increase your comfort out in the field. In fact, a lot of sleeping bag manufacturers are relying on it, as a lot of companies make their sleeping bag temperature ratings based on the person wearing thermal undergarments. So before you hop in that 20 degree sleeping bag and assume that it's going to work, it would be a good idea to figure out how they got that degree rating. Most people by now know that there are often two different degree ratings for sleeping bags. One number is the comfort rating, and the other number is the survival rating. So if you get a bag that's rated for survival at 20 degrees, and you actually take it down that low, you're going to be very, very uncomfortable. But say that you know that you have a 20 degree sleeping bag that is comfortable at 20 degrees, and the temperature is going to be at that level, or below that level, or even better, a surprise winter storm rolls in and you're trapped with an inadequate sleeping bag. One great way to increase your warmth factor is to put on thermal undergarments. Depending on what gear you choose, you could easily increase your sleeping bag's temperature rating by 10 to 15 degrees just by doing this. Another great clothing item that often people forget is the concept of the grid fleece. This is a type of fleece clothing that was first designed by, I think, Polar Tech? and the fabric is sewn into little pockets in a grid-like pattern. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just search online for grid fleece and you'll know exactly what I'm trying to describe. But this design has been taken by a lot of other manufacturers and replicated, so it's now become sort of a style of clothing. But these grid fleece jackets and shirts, really regardless of brand, tend to be very warm and comfortable, and they are often very lightweight as well. So you don't really end up eating a lot of pack space by bringing one along, or by wearing one uh, during the day as well. Another thing that people tend to forget or just not use at all is a watch cap. A watch cap, a beanie cap, toboggan, toque, whatever you want to call these, some kind of lightweight, warm, insulated hat is always a good thing to have. Many people are aware of the statistic that 90% of your body's heat is lost through the head. In actuality, quite a bit of research has been done that disproves this. The amount of body heat lost through the head is anywhere from 7 to 9 percent, and the head's surface area accounts for about 10 percent of the surface area of the rest of the body. So in reality, we actually lose less heat through our heads because we have hair. The reason for this disproven statistic still being a thing is that it seems accurate for a pretty simple reason. When you're outside in the cold weather, you're usually clothed, hopefully. But what a lot of people forget is any sort of head or face covering. Just think about how many times you yourself have thought that it's too cold to go outside without a jacket, but you don't bother with putting on a warm hat as well. So keeping a warm hat on hand is critical in cold weather, especially since most modern sleeping bags haven't quite figured out how to keep the head area of a sleeping bag just as warm as the body part. Which isn't any manufacturer's fault, it's just that you have to keep a hole open for breathing out of, so that part of the sleeping 
sleeping bag is just going to stay a little bit colder than the rest. Some people, rather than take along a warm hat, prefer to use a full-length neck gaiter or a, a buff of some kind, which can be fashioned in such a way as to be a hat. And these are great. I, I personally always carry one with me just because they're so lightweight and they can be used in hot weather as well as cold weather. And these are now super popular, which is partly due to this whole COVID thing existing, uh, but there are many different varieties out there now. Ones with pockets or are made of a fire-resistant material like Nomex, you know, stuff like that. So you can find these in any number of materials and patterns to fit whatever need you might have. And breaking out of the clothing area, the next thing we have is the Wooby, also known as the Poncho Liner. And this item item has great cultural significance. There is nothing in the entire military arsenal that is coveted as much as the poncho liner. And for good reason. It's very warm, lightweight, and does the job perfectly. The reason for its godlike status is largely due to it being small enough for most troops to carry it with them everywhere. Oftentimes, troops are not permitted to take along their bulky sleeping bags, but rather forced to go light and bring along the only piece of comfortable gear that the military makes the poncho liner. After all, troops are paid to kill people and break things, not be comfortable. And that's why it is a piece of gear that warrants such powerful emotions, not only because it is a piece of gear that is actually very good, but it is usually the only piece of comfort that soldiers have to get them through a rough and uncomfortable night. And a lot of people have modified these over the years. Routinely, you can find aftermarket upgrades, such as zippers and a hood being installed. And currently, since poncho liners are such a cultural item as much as they are a practical one, you can find people making everything from jackets to baby blankets out of the beloved poncho liner. The original poncho liner hasn't really changed much over the years. It's pretty much the same thing that was around during Vietnam, but the civilian market has taken this idea and run with it. A good example of this is the Helicon Tex Swagman roll. If you haven't heard of Helicon Tex uh, before, they are a Polish uh, company that makes very inexpensive military style gear. I say inexpensive because in no way is their stuff cheaply made. Um, in fact, it's every single Helicon product that I've owned and have tried before has been of suspiciously good quality for the price. I only mention these guys, I only mention this, this company because they make what is a modern version of the poncho liner concept, which is their Swagman roll. Now you can look this up on your own, and we're not trying to sell you anything, but the idea is interesting. Uh, essentially what it is, is, is a poncho liner, similar fabrics, not the same stuff, but it's quite similar, with a zipper around its edge and a hood attached so that it can actually be worn as a semi-waterproof poncho. Uh, this is pretty cool since most service members, like I said, usually added a zipper and maybe a hood to their poncho liner anyway. Also, if you're looking to spend a, a considerable amount more money on something like this, you can go with an American cottage industry style product from Hill People Gear called the Mountain Serap. Now, I've personally had one of these for about five years now, and I like it a lot. Uh, although my personal one isn't recognizable from the original Mountain Therapy, I added in a, a full-length zipper, a, a chest pocket, a hand warmer area, and some more insulation in the hood, and I waterproofed it as well. Um, but I have found that it is a lot warmer than the normal poncho liner right out of the box. So really, those are the only two that we can think of that kind of do this sort of thing. Uh, the, the Helicon one and the Hill People Gear one, um, those are the only two products on the market that we know of that kind of take this poncho liner, this Wooby setup, and take it to the next level. Um, there are other Woobies out there that, that you know, add in the zippers and things like that. You can actually get a few, you know, USGI ones that come with a zipper on them. But we haven't seen anybody turn it into, like, a, an actual, like, poncho with an insulated hood or something like that. So, so if you know of another company that's making something like this, just please let us know. And if you'd like for us to expand on these two that we do know of, just let us know and we might do a review on them one day or something. I don't know. So, yeah, the whole concept of the poncho liner, whether or not you get it in its true original form is just an actual actual poncho liner, a lightweight blanket, or if you get it sewn into something like an actual jacket that you can wear. Um, there's a lot of companies selling those nowadays. The whole concept of the poncho liner is really just an interesting one, and it makes a very, very valuable piece of snivel gear. Up next is something similar, but not quite. Um, the, the concept of the sleeping bag liner. Now, this is one that I th personally thought years ago was a huge gimmick and a waste of time and money. 
Um, but after a few months of sleeping in sub-zero conditions, I have really come to like the idea over the past few years of a sleeping bag liner. Now these things have been around for a while and they're essentially nothing more than a sleeping bag sack that is made out of a very, very thin fabric, sort of like a bed sheet. Most of the ones I've tried are essentially a bed sheet that is sewn into the shape of a sleeping bag. I hesitate to call these things sleeping bags because they are essentially just a bed sheet that is sewn into the shape of a sleeping bag bag. A lot of these are made out of silk or fine fabrics and are marketed towards people who travel a lot, who can sleep inside this bag in the event that they don't really trust the hotel linens. And these sleeping bag liners work very well in that role. I always use one when traveling and staying in hotels. But really the full potential of these bags is in their intended role as a sleeping bag liner. These can regularly raise the temperature of a sleeping bag anywhere from 5 to 25 degrees, depending on the material you choose. Uh, I personally use a Sea to Summit Thermolite Reactor Extreme, and I regularly increase my winter sleeping bags rating from about 20 degrees down to about zero degrees comfortably. So these things really do work quite well, which you absolutely would not think. For instance, if you were to hop in one of these and just use the sleeping bag liner as a sleeping bag, you are going to freeze even in summer weather. Uh, when I first got mine a couple of years ago, I hopped in it and tried it out and just laid on the floor in it. And I thought I just wasted like 80 bucks <laughs> because for some reason it just doesn't work when it's on its own. It's not like a poncho liner where you can wrap it around you and instantly feel warm. With a sleeping bag liner, you really have to be inside something else to feel the effect. So if you take one of these and hop inside a poncho liner or a swagman roll or a mountain syrupy or whatever, well, then you can quite comfortably go down to and sleep at right around the upper 30s. And if you have an insulated sleeping pad and a good set of thermal undergarments and a nice warm hat, you can regularly take this this system down to below freezing and still be very comfortable. Of course, everyone is different. Some people might sleep colder than others, so you might find that you might be able to get away with a summertime sleeping bag and a liner, that combo, but other people might need a full-on winter sleeping bag. So up next is shelter items, and you might not think of shelter items as being a, a snivel gear item. That's more of a, that's more of an essential item, right? You, like, always bring that with you, right, if you're staying out in the woods. Really Really what I mean is items that you keep on your person no matter what you're doing. If you're going on a, you know, a quick walk in the woods or if you're going on a multi-day event and you're bringing along another shelter, I always keep a shelter option on me. And for the longest time, I always carried a poncho as sort of my backup shelter or a primary shelter if I wasn't planning on being outside for the night. And it worked quite well. But I found that size-wise... Uh, like pack down size wise, it ended up not really working for me that well for things like ultralight trips or like bare bones setups for like a, you know, like I said, a quick walk in the woods. So what I've settled on for now is a very small five by seven sill poly ultralight tarp. Uh, when it's set up as a tarp, it offers the same exact, you know, foot space as my poncho did. But when it's stuffed down into its stuff sack, it's a little bit smaller than a Coke can. And that's with all of the guy lines and things attached already. So it easily fits in a pocket. And I've found that this actually works quite well for lots of things. Uh, for one, it easily fits into an M4 style magazine pouch, which is great because we all know that Intel Winnies don't really have a need for a lot of mags. And an extra quick deploy shelter can be a huge benefit in a surprise rainstorm. But if you want to be super high speed, you can also bring along an actual tent. This is actually a decently common tactic for remote wilderness rescue teams. One of the teams I worked with out in the Pacific Northwest would take a normal, cheap, three to four person camping tent and cut the floor out in the shape of a person lying down on the ground. That way, if you came upon a casualty that cannot be moved, and it's going to take a long time to get them out of there, but you have inclement weather coming in, you treat the patient while your teammates assemble the tent. And then the whole tent is lifted up over you and the casualty. 
So you have a shelter from the elements, and you never have to move the patient. This is quite handy and truly a lifesaver in the worst conditions. And let's face it, we tend to encounter the worst weather at the worst times with the worst circumstances kind of a lot. Up next is food. Keeping some sort of food on hand is very, very important. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but something that is easy to prepare would be preferable. A lot of people get wrapped up in the concept of food for survival, right? And they commonly leave out food as part of preparedness because of the old statistic that a person can survive for three weeks without food. Well, to be honest, this isn't quite as accurate as we might think. You might be dealing with an injured person, or inclement weather, or intense physical exertion, all of which will shorten that time. Water is still a lot more important than food, it's vastly more important than food, but food is very important not only for physical survival, but for psychological survival as well. Food has a direct link to a person's morale. So if you decide to take a team out for a, a recon mission or something, and you decide to take little food with you for a multi-day mission, well, you will find that your effectiveness is not nearly as good as you would think. Hunger decreases physical and cognitive abilities. So the hungrier you are, the less you can think critically. And that's not what we need, especially in the intel world where we're paid to use our minds so that we don't have to use our guns. A simple solution to this food problem would be getting something called hot wets. Basically, this is just a, a, a way to make a cup of coffee and a hot cup of, of broth of some kind, some kind of bouillon cube or something. It's hot and it's wet, so there's a, there's the nickname. Uh, even something as simple as this can turn a group of unhappy campers into a well-oiled machine again just because you have that little something to keep you going. It doesn't really weigh that much, and it, it can really increase morale. And if people are happy and feeling good, well, then they're just all the more effective. As such, we recommend always bringing along some sort of backpacking stove and maybe a little tiny cup or, or, or pot that everything can nest inside. Uh, we all know that cool dude on deployment with the jet boil. These things have become a status symbol in the military over the past few years. Same thing with hammocks. Uh, but you don't need to spend the money on a jet boil. A, a cheap $30 to $40 stove and a couple of fuel canisters from a backpacking store, these are cheap and lightweight, and they can infinitely improve morale in the field. And last but not least, one of the more important pieces of snivel gear are baby wipes. Once again, every service member who has deployed, or really anyone who has gone to an austere environment for a period of time, knows the importance of baby wipes. Not only can they be used for their intended purpose, in which case they are vastly better than toilet paper in the field, but they can also be used to clean yourself off in the field when you can't properly shower. And this is very, very important in the field. You wouldn't think that remaining clean would be such a psychological factor, but it really, really is. And a lot of sort of the backpacking community uh, tends to not really focus on this too much because backpackers, let's be honest, the backpacking community is not exactly uh, focused on carrying a hundred pound rucksack 20 to 30 miles over, you know, a, a day or two. They're meant to go light and fast, right? And have luxury and have time and enjoy being outdoors. Whereas if you're having to embrace the suck, something like baby wives can really help you out because hygiene, being able to clean yourself off, being able to make sure you get bacteria and sweat and dirt and grime off of you is very important, not just for morale, but for making sure that you stave off infections, making sure that wounds stay clean, making sure that rashes that you have don't turn into something more serious. And this is something that we don't really see a whole lot of people including in the whole bug out bag community. You can always tell someone who has sort of built their bug out bag just to get a YouTube view because they will have a bug out bag that they say that they're going to be using to traverse 20, 30 miles with, but you'll notice that they don't carry anything like baby wipes, no moleskin, no foot powder, no uh, fresh change of socks, things like that, and you know that they're just full of it because that's the kind of stuff you need to go just a few miles. But baby wipes are a critical part of this, especially for the medical side of the house. A lot of veterans have gotten out over the past 10 years or so and drastically changed the outdoor market. And nowadays, there are a lot of very expensive options for wet wipes. 
There are ones that are advertised as being more durable, more you know, like made out of fabric as opposed to, say, like a normal wet, uh, wet wipe, or made of biodegradable materials, or camouflaged in a darker color, or even ones that are like bigger. Like some wipes can be as big as a normal sized like towel. But again, you don't have to spend a lot of money on these. Regular baby wipes work just as well. Now, I will caveat that a lot of modern baby wipes uh, tend to be a lot softer and more. Uh, disintegratable than uh, previous uh, in previous years. So if you tend to be a uh, very violent scrubber with baby wipes, or if you tend to be a, a, a pretty hairy person, uh, a lot of these uh, baby wipes will tend to just tear up and disintegrate on you. So depending on your own personal body type and habits, uh, you might actually want to get some of these more durable wipes. Um, but for the most part, I've found that, you know, normal baby wipes work just as well. You can deal with it. And considering that a lot of these, you know, specialty wipes are sometimes two and three times the price of normal baby wipes, you know, that's that's kind of a thing if you go through a lot of these at once. And I would also recommend getting the unscented variety, um, unless you plan on smelling like an infant during your time in the field, uh, which is kind of funny. You might get some, you know, a little bit of hazing from that, but... This is a more serious issue than you might think, because remember that scents travel a long way, so this could be a security concern as well. So that's really it. That's our list of gear that can help you be not so miserable in the field, even in a contingent circumstance. Though a lot of people and entities like the military kind of shun comfort a lot of times for understandable reasons, we have to understand that this is, this is a balance, right? Pure misery and low morale will kill a unit's combat effectiveness. For we civilians, we aren't exactly training for a war here, right? But maintaining some minimal level of comfort in the field can quite greatly increase mission success. So that's all we've got for now. Make sure to subscribe and check out our other platforms for more content. And if you'd like to support us, check out our merch store and our Patreon page, both of which are linked below. And before you go, let us know what you think in the comments below. What is your favorite piece of snivel gear? That one comfort item that you will never leave home without. And with that, we'll see you next time. And as always, fight in the shade.